Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Moss and in this video, I'm going to show you how to upload files to a Slack channel using the Go programming language. In order to follow along with this tutorial, you'll want to make sure that you have a Slack app created and a Slack bot user with the files colon write scope added to that Slack bot. In addition, the Slack bot has to be added to the channel that you intend on sending files to. If you need help creating a Slack app or a Slack bot user, I have a video that walks you through those steps that you can check out before proceeding with the tutorial. All the code that we're going to write today is available in a GitHub repo, and I've included a link to that repo in the video description below. If you enjoy this video and find it valuable, please consider throwing a like on it and subscribing to the channel for more videos like it. If you haven't already, go ahead and grab a coffee and let's get started. Okay, so I'm in my editor and I've created a file called file upload example.go. And this is a file where we're going to write all of the logic to upload a file to Slack. And uh, I've created a very simple text file. Uh, this text file is the file that we're going to upload. Inside of that text file, uh, I just have, you know, hello world in the, uh, in the text file. And this file is in the same directory as the file upload example.go file. So the first thing I need to do is declare package main. And after I declare that package, I'm going to import uh, several uh, libraries. The first is going to be FMT, and then we're going to import the OS library. And the OS library is going to allow us to pull environment variables on this computer. And I've set two environment variables. The first is my Slack bot token. And then the second environment variable is the Slack channel ID. And uh, we're going to reference those environment variables uh, when we're making a call to the Slack API endpoint. And the last library that we're going to import is the Slack hyphen go library. And this is a Slack uh, API client library that will allow us to easily communicate with the Slack API. So that's uh, going to be github.com forward slash Slack hyphen go forward slash Slack. Okay. And we'll initialize a uh, module after we uh, write the logic in this file. The next thing that we're going to do is define a main function and inside of the main function, we're going to instantiate um, an instance of an API client and we'll just call it API and then we'll call slack dot new. And here's where we're going to uh, provide this instantiation of this constructor method with the uh, slack bot token and uh, the Slack bot token for me is added as an environment variable uh, on my machine. So I'm going to invoke the OS library get env and then the name of the environment variable, which is uh, Slack underscore bot underscore token. Okay. And this Slack dot new function should return an instance of a uh, client connection to the Slack API. So we'll be able to make uh, calls to Slack API endpoints using this API instance. So after uh, initializing an API connection, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to define a channel array. And in our array, we're only going to have a single uh, channel that we're sending files to. But we could add multiple. If we wanted to add, uh, send the file to multiple channels, we could also do that by including additional uh, channels in this array. Um, in this case, it's only a single channel, like I said. So inside of the string array, I am going to call os.getenv again. And the name of my environment variable is channel underscore ID. Okay. And remember, you you don't necessarily need to store these environment variables. You could hard code these, but it is a best practice to not include like, you know, tokens uh, in your source code, especially if you're going to commit them to a code base and push them to GitHub. You, you don't want to necessarily commit uh, tokens or IDs uh, like that to your uh, code base. So now we have the uh, channel array and we'll use this when we make a call to the file uh, upload API endpoint. The next uh, variable that we want to define are the, par uh, the parameters and we'll call it just params. 
and params are equal to slack dot file upload parameters. And uh, we'll define a couple of parameters in here. The first is going to be the channels that we want to send our file, uh, our file to. And we're going to reference the channel array that we just created. And the next thing that we're going to do is we'll uh, specify the file that we want to upload. And to do that, we're just going to uh, set the file. And we'll pass in the name of the file. And this uh, slack.file upload parameters should return uh, a pointer to this uh, struct, right? So it should return a pointer to a file upload parameters uh, struct. After we define the uh, parameters variable, we can then make a call to the API. And we're going to make a call to the uh, uh, upload file API endpoint. So we'll first define a file variable and then an error to uh, catch any errors that are returned by the, uh, the invocation of the endpoint. And we'll say api.upload file and pass in the params uh, <clears throat> variable that we defined earlier. And we'll want to check whether or not uh, this returns an error. So I'm just going to say if error is not equal to nil, we'll print the error to the screen. And return. OK. Otherwise, we'll simply print out the uh, file name that was uploaded. So I'm going to uh, print here name and a new line and then file.name. Okay. And I think that should be everything. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, initialize a new Go module from the command line. So I'm going to open up a terminal session. I'm already in the directory uh, where um, my Go program is. So I'm going to say go mod init, and we'll call it file upload. And then I'm going to invoke go mod tidy to make sure the requirements are pulled in. So it found the slack hyphen go library. And now that we've done that, let's go ahead uh, and check the browser. I'm going to make sure that I have uh, my channel open in Slack. Okay, so we're going to post to this general channel the test.txt file. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the terminal and let's say go run file upload example. All right. Okay, and it looks like it confirmed that it, it did upload it. And if I navigate to the browser, you can see that our test.txt file was uploaded uh, correctly. And it automatically just includes the title of it as the name of the file. And we get the contents of the file uh, kind of previewed in the, uh, in the Slack channel as well. So uploading a single file to a channel in Slack is pretty straightforward. But you might have a need to upload multiple files uh, to a Slack channel. And unfortunately, the files that upload uh, API method doesn't allow you to specify multiple files. So in order to upload multiple files, you have to make multiple calls to the endpoint for each file that you want to upload. So let's go ahead and modify our program uh, so that we have, if, if we have a list of files that we want to upload, we'll iterate over that list and then uh, call the upload file method to upload each of those files. So I'm going to navigate back to the editor. And the first thing that I want to do is I just want to make a new uh, text file. So let's go ahead and create a new text file. We'll call it um, test2.txt. And we'll say, hello world uh, version 2. Okay. 
And uh, now that we have multiple files that we want to upload, we'll upload both uh, test and test two. Um, I'm going to create an array for those files. So let's call it a file array. And this is going to be an array of strings. And the first one is going to be test.text. And the second is going to be test2. Oh, let me close out that. Uh, the second one is going to be test2.text. And after we define that uh, file array, we'll want to modify the logic where we upload um, upload the file and call the uh, upload file uh, method. So we're going to want to put this logic, all of this logic inside of a simple for loop. I'm going to say for i equals zero. while i is less than the length of file array i plus plus okay and then let's move this logic inside of that for loop and what we're going to do is we're going to replace the uh, file parameter with the index the current index of file array. Okay. And that should be all we need. So let's go ahead and run the program again. I'm going to pull up the uh, terminal and let's rerun uh, the program. And it looks like we got confirmation on both files. So if I navigate back to Slack, you can see that both files, uh, the test.txt and the test2.txt were both uploaded to the channel. So even when you have to upload multiple files, it's still pretty straightforward to do so. You just have to make uh, calls to the upload file method for each file that you have. And you can see where this functionality might come in handy uh, if you have like a CI server, for instance, like a Jenkins server that's producing build artifacts. Some of those artifacts you might want to upload to a dedicated Slack channel uh, for people to easily be able to review those artifacts. But that's pretty much it, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider throwing a like on it and subscribing to the channel for more videos like it. Thanks for watching.